the Orioles have received plenty of interest in their late-inning relievers here at the winter meetings, and a fast-spending free agent market for bullpen pieces that has emerged this week will make pitchers such as closer Zach Britton and set-up man Brad Bratch both pending free agents next year more attractive to potential trade suitors. But Orioles executive vice president Dan Duquette said the money being spent through free agency on relievers is shocking, and even though the Orioles are well positioned for 2018, he said a market that spiked so suddenly can't be good for clubs in the long term. Over a 24 hour span, three non closer relievers earned lucrative free agent deals. Former Orioles right hander Tommy Hunter received a two year, $18 million contract from the Philadelphia Phillies. Right-hander Anthony Swarzak got a two-year, $14 million deal with the New York Mets and right-hander Juan Nicasio agreed to a two-year, $17 million pact with the Seattle Mariners. The market's been robust for the relief pitchers, and I'm not talking about the closers either, Duquette said. I'm talking about relievers and set-up relievers. I've seen some stunning deals recently, some absolutely stunning deals, a couple of the relief pitcher deals. Usually clubs will go out and sign the starting pitchers first, right, and the money they are spending on the middle relievers now is just unbelievable. Bratch who had 18 saves filling in for Britain last year is projected to make just $5.2 million next year in his final season of arbitration eligibility. Britain will make an estimated $12.2 million in 2018, which, while a large amount, is less than the average annual value that free agent closers such as Wade Davis or Greg Holland are commanding. Reliever Michael Givens has the greatest value because he isn't arbitration eligible until 2019 and is under team control for the next four years. We have good relievers and I think they're signed to cost-effective contracts, Duquette said. Some of the contracts I'm seeing, I don't know how they're cost-effective. They certainly wouldn't be cost-effective in Baltimore. I was just floored by the contracts I saw this morning. The surging market would place more trade value on the Orioles' late-inning arms, but Duquette expressed concern that it could price out clubs in the future if it continues, especially combined with a starting pitching free agent market that often involves overpaying, which the Orioles don't often delve into. The short-term commitments for less money are certainly more attractive than the long-term commitments for a lot of money, Duquette said. So from that sense, it's a plus for the Orioles, but long-term, that can't be a plus when the market jumps that quickly and swiftly in that area of the market. That can't be a good thing long-term. Rule 5 matters, with just 34 players on their roster, the fewest of any team, the Orioles have plenty of room to make multiple picks in Thursday's Rule 5 draft, but carrying such selections on a major league roster will be difficult because the team still has to carry outfielder Anthony Santander, one of last year's picks, for the first six weeks of the season for him to fulfill his Rule 5 requirements. That would be tough, but we'll have to see, Duquette said.